Hello and welcome to Theater Kid Goes on Vacation. So I went on vacation to Hawaii. Um, this is the longest I've ever had to be in a plane. I have never been outside the country and I technically still have not. Um, but I did flo fly over a giant body of water and I uh, hate open bodies of water. Um, and the longest I've ever been in a plane. I think it was like 13 hours or something. But I uh, flew to Seattle, had a layover in Seattle, uh, ran to my flight. Uh, and uh, there I am just uh, standing in the bathroom. Um, because I hate my life. <laughs> um, and then I got this really, really cute charcut from the uh, from Delta. Um, I obviously bought it. They didn't give it to me because they don't know who I am. But then I'm in Hawaii. Aloha. Oi. And then I saw Joel. I got laid. Big soup, big soup, big soup, big soup. <laughs> So I'm staying with my childhood best friend from like the second grade, Joel, who is uh, lives in uh, on Oahu, the island of Oahu, um, and he lives in Waikiki, um, which is like one of the tourist hubs of the world. And then this is us getting up at 5 a.m. the next day to get on another plane to go to Big Island, which is also called Hawaii, which is confusing. There's a big historical relevance of why it's called that. This is us in another plane that was probably made in like the 1970s. Um, but look how pretty. It's so gorgeous. And of course, this is when I'm first seeing it. So I'm just overwhelmed by how beautiful it looks. God, look at that. That's so pretty. So this is looking over Oahu. Honolulu really um and obviously the resorts are evil but like it's just crazy it's one big side of a volcano and you can see like that little crater looking thing is where a bubble of the of the volcano came up and um like rose up and then popped and that's what makes that uh that crater looking thing it was just just lava beautiful lava and then this is pog um, but this was like artificial pog. I got some better pog later, but this is the pog, first pog I got. And then look at this. So the reason that the water um, looks uh, very like brown is because there was so much rain. It was raining on and off like the entire time we were there. But that's why the waterfall is flowing so vigorously. But also why it looks like that because it's a bunch of rain runoff. And then this is a weird tree where the roots grow down from the branches. But we apparently have these in like Florida too, but I've never seen them. They look f crazy. Um, but look at this. Good God. It's beautiful. I just, I don't even know. I don't even know what to do with myself. Like this is something I actually witnessed and saw. And then I took my camera out and I showed you. What I could not get over is how absolutely blue the water is. Like it is the bluest blue. Yeah, this lady really held out for like a couple days before it started looking rough. <laughs> look at that. And all those beaches down there are black sand beaches, which is just like broken up lava. And then here I'm going to try to squish the mountain. And I almost lost my hat. And obviously there's just all these gorgeous flowers everywhere. But then you go and it's just like grasslands. So there's 10 different climates that exist on the big island of Hawaii. There's like the uh, rainforest. There's a desert. There's the grasslands. There's the beach. There's the mountains. A bunch of different uh, climates. And it is the newest earth that you'll ever stand on. But look how the rolling hills. And that's just because the lava dried eventually after it's like a giant pool of lava. And then uh, grass just grows on top of it. And those are wild goats, which aren't really wild. Uh, but they are wild there. But they obviously didn't originally habitate there. But this is, there's a volcano on that side. There's a volcano on that side. You just can't really see it. In this footage but this there and then there's a little gay rainbow for me and joel just for a what the f is this from the 1980s you said yeah this is the Philippines, so nothing's grown on it yet oh my god holy oh god 
So I'm really excited about seeing something that's even closely related to lava. But in a second, you're about to see these trees called the Ojai tree. And I think that's the right pronunciation of it. But they're a pioneer tree that grows out of the lava. It's the first thing to grow out of the lava. And it puts nutrients back into the earth. Nuts! And then this is outside of our Airbnb. And that, that little dog's name is Batman. Look at him, little Batman. And then that's a volcano! It's a volcano, my guy. Look. Oh, okay. And and then I was going to call this video Theater Kids Slow Descent into Madness because I start to lose my shit when I see this lava. I'm freaking out. That is so cool. I am so, I want to jump in it. The lava pops. The like, little strands of lava that get thrown up in the air cool really fast and they turn into glass threads. That's so cool. That's so pretty. Like in the video, it like sparkles. Bro, I can't. This is so magnificent right now. I am not trying to trip. I'm trying to video. Oh my god. So this is literally all I thought we were gonna see was this little sliver of lava. And I freak out just about that. Like, I thought it was just this. And then... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. What is it? Holy shit. That's so cool. It's... Where are you? It's bellowing. Look, it's like bubbling. So after I deal with my mental breakdown over seeing liquid earth, we went into uh, the next day into what is basically the jungle, basically the rainforest. And we go into, this is called a lava tube. Um, and so when the lava is flowing through, um, this is just like a cave that it basically makes. The state bird of Hawaii, it's called the Nene. Uh, it's the world's rarest goose. Those are your uh, goose facts with Joel. So a really interesting thing about these geese is that they were extinct on Hawaii. And then they uh, went to a bird collector uh, in like England or something who had like five. And they repopula he repopulated all of the islands with Nene uh, based off of those five birds that he had <laughs> from Hawaii. But the reason that they're extinct is or went extinct on the island was because we brought rats over to the island and then uh, we were like, oh, let's get something to kill these rats. So they brought mongoose over. But rats are nocturnal and mongoose are not nocturnal. So the mongoose just ate all the nene eggs. And then look at this beautiful thing. God, it's gorgeous. And you see all the black sand, just the lava going and going and going and the only thing that stops it is the ocean one powerful force of nature against the other like me yeah i was very as you can tell i'm pretty i'm pretty stoked looks like we're like taking the ring to throw into the volcano except there's the ocean so the big island, the one that we are on currently with uh, the two active volcanoes, I think there might be three active volcanoes on Big Island. Uh, but the reason that that one is also called Hawaii is because originally um, all of the islands were their own kingdom. And then the king of Hawaii, the Big Island, was like, nah, I'm kind of like over us all fighting all the time. Let's just all be one and I'll be the ruler of it. So he took over all the other kingdoms um, and he named all of it Hawaii. And this island is also called Hawaii, but I guess locals call it Big Island. Um, and then this is me walking out to go see the carvings that are uh, in the lava rock. So, you know, the tagging and the original graffiti done by uh, the Polynesian people. So 
these are the carvings. Um, so they're like a thousand years old. They're pretty, pretty cool. But you'll see these little like swirls. And um, the Polynesians uh, believed that the umbilical cord was, see the swirl right there. The umbilical cord was like really sacred. So whenever they would have uh, like a birth of a chief's child they would take the umbilical cord and uh do this like swirl and then put the umbilical cord in and put a bunch of lava rocks on top of it and so that was supposed to be like a big symbolic thing and apparently these dots that you see everywhere are also like really important but I don't remember that fact right now um but it's really cool they just like carved all this stuff but it is 100% original graffiti but still neat nonetheless still very very neat And then we went to these black sand beaches. This was wild. So I grew up in Panama City Beach, which is notorious for having white sand beaches. And everybody always loses their shit about the white sand. Black sand, infinitely cooler, my guy. So neat. And then I got to see the sea turtles. Sea turtles bathing. Joel was telling me some fact like there's only 9,000 female sea turtles in the wild. Uh, which is pretty crazy, um, but you can't even touch them. This is all gated, and if you, like, go mess with them, it's a felony. So <laughs> don't touch the sea turtles because he's just, like, chilling, you know? But sea turtles go and they lay eggs at the exact same beach every single year, which makes sense because it's, like, if those – if they survived, then obviously it's, like, a safer beach than most because, as you know, sea turtles kind of get all uh, eaten. Um, and then I'm just going to – voice over me constantly walking <laughs> over this lava rock I 100% cut my foot so this flower is super important there's a big uh Hawaiian legend about it and in this audio Joel retells me the entire legend does a great job being very theatrical but it's too windy, so you can't hear. Joel is a professional tour guide on the island of Oahu, as well as uh, getting his doctorate in entomology. So he's a wealth of knowledge. Um, it was the best possible thing I could do. Hey, I'm taking a video. Enjoy. Fun. That's it. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, it is. <laughs> I'm back. Just one of the craziest things I've ever seen like the bluest water with the blackest sand so this was a mural uh that's on the southernmost uh bakery in the United States and then this is us driving we drove so much we drove all around Big Island uh rented a jeep and we just flew baby and again those are the the volcanoes on either side and this is us going back so this is a little montage I'll make of just me walking around Waikiki um, while Joel is doing something for work. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a little touristy. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about the resorts in this video. Like I said earlier, the resorts are evil. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Hilton. Um, so there's this thing about the water um, and the people's water supply in uh, Honolulu specifically. Um and it's a little bit more complicated uh, of an issue than just, oh, the tourism is the reason that they don't have any water. Um, so they, oh, so gorgeous. So they have their own water supply, the like people that live there, and then the resorts have their own water supply. Okay, somehow, um, as you know, capitalism does, the resorts have been able to wiggle their way, look, there's more pog, wiggle their way into um, getting the water supply that belongs to the people that are inhabited there. Um, and obviously there's gentrification and all of those kinds of things. But it's even more complicated than this because the army base that is on Honolulu accidentally got jet fuel into the public water supply and then they said hey we will clean this no problem a one day we're the government will do a fine job didn't do that and then they were like oh I thought you said you did in Honolulu there are parts of Honolulu where you can set the water on fire on fire because there's jet fuel in it so it's not just tourism 
our government be governmenting, as you can tell. And this is just me yelling about it in a segment on my beautiful video. But now that I have yelled about that. So this is a surfing beach. Uh, you can't just swim in it because the tides are crazy. There's also lava rock in there. I was talking to a guy who was a surfs in, in Hawaii and he was like, yeah, it hurts really bad when you wipe out because you can like run into a rock. But a lot of these are surfing beaches where you have to have a surfboard or a boogie board or something like that. And even just looking at this footage right now, it takes my breath away. So that island that's across that you saw for just a split second that I might show you again was called Rabbit Island. They had like an over infestation of rabbits and they put them all there. Uh, now there aren't rabbits there. Now it's a bird sanctuary. But it's called Rabbit Island for that reason. Look how blue. It was very, very windy up here. But it's like gorgeous. Like this is crazy gorgeous. Uh, but this is us going around the entire island of Oahu. Uh, and Joel's giving me the tour. And special fact, this is where the first king of Hawaii uh, made like 800 men jump off the side of the mountain to their deaths uh, when he <laughs> took over. Wow, chickas! Wow, chickas! So this is uh, the Japanese temple, uh, a Buddhist temple. Um, and it has the biggest, I think it's the biggest wooden Buddha in the continental U.S. And this is the, the gong that you ring for good luck. And apparently I didn't do a enough job the first time, so I had to do it again. And now I have good luck. Yay. Good luck for me. I need it. Thank you. Please, dear God. The big old, it's a, it's, a, it's a Buddha made out of wood. It looks like it's made out of metal, but it's not. It's a wooden Buddha that's carved. Um, but this uh, temple is only slightly smaller than the one in Japan. Um, but there's a really, really big Japanese culture in Hawaii um, because there used to be rice fields in Hawaii that a lot of people immigrated there to work on. This is the first time I've ever lit incense in my entire life. And I'm very accomplished by that. And then there's a black swan. And these are the most vigorous koi fish I've ever seen in my entire life. Like they're after it. You can like feed them there. But they are freaking out in a swarm, my guy. I but super beautiful, like, uh, it's just, just there. And then there's nature, you know, we're back to regular sand, but it's still gorgeous. And this is the Lost Island, like actually. They filmed all of Lost here, and they filmed all Jurassic Park here. So this is actually Jurassic Park, and actually Lost. And that's actually Karis. <laughs> And this is actually, Karis, getting sunburnt right before your very eyes. Um, <laughs> me and Joel were looking for termites all around the island. And he was like, we have to stop at every beach. And I was like, oh, wow, we have to stop at every beach in Oahu. So sad for me. Look how blue the water is. It's Jurassic Park, my guy. Like, that's wild absolutely wild but all of these beaches are public so anybody can watch through them it does not matter if it is a, has a house on it, it doesn't matter if it has a resort on it you can walk across the beach they're all public beaches look how beautiful it's just so crazy blue because there's no algae in the water I guess because it's too cold I'm not sure but that doesn't look real that doesn't look like a real thing that looks like a fake thing but I was there I saw it first person my guy look at that and this is what's behind me is supposed to be all of Oahu is supposed to look like a lizard. And because uh, there's like a big like spine looking thing through the back. And that's supposed to be the lizard's head. See, it's got a little eye in it. And then I got my uh, pineapple drink. I told uh, Joel all I wanted to do for this trip was to see lava. Check. And then I got, uh, I just wanted to drink something out of a pineapple. And I did. And it was really, really good. And uh, there's a little peacock behind me. <laughs> Which is just because we're somewhere. But yeah, and it was good. I got a little, a little umbrella in it. So now what we are looking at is the uh, pineapple plantation. Okay, so I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about how evil Dole is. Um, so what happened was this is back in the 1800s. Okay, the last queen of Hawaii. She was ruling Hawaii. This is a rainbow eucalyptus tree, which is really cool, but does not distract from how evil Dole is. So back to how evil Dole is. So the last queen of Hawaii, she, uh, you know, they were all like America was over there doing trade, doing all kinds of stuff. There was a uh, pineapple and sugar cane that they were growing there. They grew a lot of the world's pineapple on Hawaii. Okay. Um, but what happened was, is they were like, oh, we have to pay all these tariffs when we like 
bring it back to the United States because it's not, you know, part of the United States. So they're like, what if we make the United States? And Dole was like, yeah, we'll help you. So they like bomb the United States government in a coup and they take the, the queen of Hawaii and they go, hey, we're going to kill all your nieces and nephews if you don't sign it over and make Hawaii a state. And she's like, well, that sucks because I got like 10 nieces and nephews. And so that's how Hawaii is a state because Dole wanted to make more money selling pineapple. It takes three years to grow a pineapple, bro. It shouldn't be accessible to grow pineapple. Eve doll is evil also and then when the United States was like oh yeah you're now a state then they're like hey doll you have to pay your workers minimum wage so they were like forget that we're gonna just go grow pineapples in the Philippines so now all the pineapples that are grown in Hawaii don't even leave Hawaii I'm mad that's a termite we're in Joel's lab because we were looking at termites and look at that this is a termite this is what his research is on termites <laughs> I like I like in this video is me being mad and then being like oh but look at this thing so now we are reaching the uh termite hunting <laughs> segment of the video because Joel was like I do have to work while you're here and I was like yeah dude let's go look for some termites so this is theater kid is an entomologist for a day so this is like some like national park or whatever there's lots of national parks um but this is where uh you can like overlook like all of like look how crazy that's just crazy and then you can see that little crest thing but this is a uh a little a little dead stick where there are termites possibly potentially um and he was like oh this is a good spot for termites by termite okay so we're gonna get in here like a bird would we'll rip it all away yeah, this is the layer they're in for sure. So they did all this like nasty, dirty stuff. Oh, sorry. Uh, and that's a termite gallery. So that's like the tube they make in the log. Where did I, where did I find that one? Oh, oh. So those are termites that are running away from me. That's a that's worker. That's a big old one. Yeah, so these guys are really big. But that's a worker. I don't need any workers. I just need one soldier. That's what I'm looking for. And you for. can tell the difference between because what? Um, these guys have little round white heads. The soldier will have a big square orange head. Yeah, there's a worker or a soldier. Okay, yeah, I see his head is. It's like amber colored, and he's got the big sharp uh, jaws. Fucker, <laughs> look at him. He's like absolutely not. They will not get in the jar. All the workers are already dead. Go protect them. At all. <laughs> there we go. Got him. Gotta try to collect them without hurting them, which is very hard. So we could potentially breed these guys in the lab. Breed them? Yeah. That's what you said. So then we could have like a functioning colony. Because right now our colony doesn't function. It, it when every when each termite dies, it, it can't get replaced because we don't have any um, queens or anything. Mm -hmm. But these are queens. So if I can get them back to the lab safely, not the workers. I don't need these guys. Everyone else piss off. So uh, we looked for termites for quite a while, and that was fun. And then I saw this big old tree. So this kind of tree, I forget what it's called, uh, but it's this is the biggest one in the continental U.S. And you can see I am a little girl giant tree. I climb. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I got to see this a gorgeous sunset over the bay. I think that's a bay, right? Yeah, I'm just going to say it's a bay. <laughs> Pretty sunset. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous sunset. Even prettier as it goes down. But just, oh man. I think this was the second to last night that I was there. And then this is where we went snorkeling. So, Karis and water. We have a very weird history. Um, I had to be reassured there were no sharks. I needed everyone to lie to me and tell me there's going to be no sharks. This is Toby. This is a little, um, I think he's a zebra pigeon is what they're called. And he was dumb, but he was around me and I love him. Um, but we went in Hanama Bay, I think is what it's called. I have a clip of it at the end. But, um, I snorkeled in this and it was so pretty. I got to see like parrot fish and uh, sea cucumbers and I got to see all kinds of cool things. I didn't realize there was so much footage of Toby in this. I don't, really, I don't think we need all this. And my lips got so, so, so pruney. And I think it's because I just have never like put my mouth in the ocean. <laughs> like my face was directly in the ocean. But when I first put the snorkel in and we started snorkeling, I had like a little baby panic attack. 
uh, <laughs> because I'm not the best swimmer and you can't like touch the coral because it is alive. So if you go snorkeling in Anama Bay, do not touch the coral. It is trying to live. But they used to let 10,000 people come here every day. And now they only let 1,000 because um, during COVID when they shut it down, they saw that the, the reef expanded so much. Yeah, Hanama Bay. Um, and so now they only let 1,000 people there a day. Um, but God, just the most gorgeous island. Just a crazy thing to see in real life. And then I got some shave ice that had some soft serve in it. And then the snow cap on top. Uh, extra aloha served daily. Aloha state of mind. The aloha spirit, as they say. And then this is the palace. Remember when I was talking about how there was a coup and they took over the king. The so this is where the queen lived. Um, and that's the first king of uh, Hawaii. I forget what his name is because it's confusing sounding. Um, <laughs> but this is the only palace in the continental U.S. because it was its own kingdom before we took it over because we're dirty, dirty colonizers. Um, but it's so, so beautiful. Look at that. I didn't get to go inside. But next time in Hawaii, I'm definitely going to do that. This is some uh, footage that was out of order. But this is what I was talking about, about how um, there's just so many different climates. Like there's Big Island uh, that has like the rainforest and volcanoes and mountaintops. And this is just so nuts and crazy and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. And I can't. I just can't with it. I want, I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to have to go back. I was only there for six days, I think. <laughs> and we shoved a lot into that six days. Um, but I did not get to see everything. But I saw so many things. And, um, you know, I, I always said if I had the opportunity to travel, I was going to. And I'm so, so, so glad that I did. This waterfall was so big you couldn't even see the bottom. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm kid. This is awesome. Okay, I repositioned him. I positioned him more specifically. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna miss the movie. I'm gonna be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> And now I am done with Hawaii and I get back on a plane early in the morning and now I'm going to Vegas, baby. Viva Las Vegas. Viva, don't copyright claim my channel. So I went to this place called um, Area 15 uh, and this is the mural that's outside. It's pretty sick. Um, and I ate this gnocchi. I'm gonna let you know right now, there's gonna be a lot of footage of food. And uh, this is what's inside of Area 15. There's just like a lot of like cool uh, things that you can do. And it's like all artsy looking. Um, but we did this thing where we got to go up really high and see um, the whole strip, which we'll do in a second. Oh, we go up very slowly. And then you get to see the strip.
I know you thought that was the end, but it's not. So sorry, suckers. So then I went to Pawn Stars. Because <laughs> I really wanted to. It was just a it was just a pawn shop. But this we went to Fremont Street. So Fremont Street has this big like digital ceiling that like plays all these shows or whatever. And there's this there's this zip line. And I did a zip line through Fremont Street. And it was super, super fun. And, and then I went to the Rio because I got tickets to go see Penn and Teller. I have watched Penn and Teller for a really long time. And I was really, really stoked to get to see them. And then I make my way to the Grand Canyon. So I've never seen the Grand Canyon. I want you to keep in mind that I was just in Hawaii. So Hawaii is the newest earth. That's the, like, the earth that's just being creative. Like, 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 like the liquid earth that's coming out and making new earth. And this is basically the oldest earth. So it was so wild to get to see it. Like, look at that. Like, it's nuts. That's nuts. We went to Grand Canyon West, which is technically in Arizona. So it's like two and a half hours outside of Las Vegas. Um, su super stoked I was able to go. Like, just look how crazy that is. All of this is formed from the Colorado River, just like digging through it, I guess. <laughs> But um, Grand Canyon West is on an Indian reserve. And so uh, it's, you know, ran by Native people. And I think that that's so, so awesome. Um, they have something here called the Skywalk where you can uh, walk out and the ground uh, that what you're standing on is glass. And so you just look 4,000 feet down. God, it's so beautiful. And then we drive back into town and I wanted to go to Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> so there I am meeting Gordon Ramsay himself. This is right outside Caesar's Palace, which I have more footage of later. But here I am in Hell's Kitchen spending the most amount of money on food that I've ever spent in my entire life. It was so worth it. This was a lobster risotto. And then I had a gin drink that's called something with, you know, the gin. And then the beef welly, baby. And my friend got the braised short rib, which was also like super, super, super good. But dude, you got to get the beef Wellington if you're going to go to Hell's Kitchen. And then this was the toffee pudding. And when I tell you this is the best dessert I've ever had, it was the best dessert I've ever had in my life. And then I had to play some slots machines. I won $3 first time I pulled it. And then I was like, all right, cool. I'm good. And then we smoked some cigars because I'm a cigar girl now. And it is just crazy. Like this is inside of Caesar's Palace. Like, this is the craziest display of wealth I've ever seen. <laughs> and then they're, you know, they we're celebrating the Lunar New Year. So they had this whole, in one of the, I don't remember which hotel this was in, um, resort casino thing. But they had the Lunar New Year. And then this is the water show that's in front of, I forget which one. But it's <laughs> in front of it. The, the Bellagio, because you can see it written on the uh, hotel. So. And then we ended it going to this speakeasy that was inside of a Chinese restaurant. It was very cool. See, now you're trapped in the infinity of YouTube. <laughs> and that was my trip. I'm exhausted. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.